you. Thanks to, to Jenny for inviting us out here today. I'm Jake Grung. I'm coordinator of academic support services at Carl Sandburg College. Means a couple of things. I, I work uh, with students with disabilities on the one hand and with tutoring services on campus on the other. Um, so first, we're going to talk about annotated bibliographies today. Um, and uh, annotated bibliographies kind of kind of get a bad bad rep. Um, it's going to be really pretty pretty bare bones. And you know, 30 minutes or so. Um, might not be able to cover the details of exactly what every kind of bibliography you're ever going to write is going to be like. Um, so I did want to point out in the back, this is Mark, Mark Beckham, one of our, our English tutors. Everybody gets a turn and It's an uncomfortable piece. Um, Mark Beckham, one of our English tutors. We also have Aaron Carter down there. Um, I've got another one that I hopefully going to start here in a, in a week or so. Um, all great with any sort of writing. Um, so if you're writing an annotated bibliography, I would say, first of all, keep in mind some of the stuff uh, that we're going to talk about today. Um, but as you're working on them, feel free to bring them down to the tutoring center. That goes for any of your writing, any of your classes. Um, take it to the tutoring center. We can really work one-on-one -on -one, um, with your unique document, your unique uh, circumstances. So uh, we'd really like to help students down there, and then we want to come down. Um, how many of you down are here for uh, nursing class? Um, I understand, okay, I won't mention anything about the not extra credit. Because, uh, <laughs> all right. So, um, I'd ask you all to go ahead and get out some sort of device connected to wireless. I want to start with a little bit of a survey. So if you're all at the hoop.it, let me take a moment to get there myself. Game pen. So if you type in 493033, service music. And go ahead and, and enter when you get there. Your name should start showing up when we see we've got a fair amount of names up there. We'll go ahead and get started. <laughs> Somebody in here is named one, two, three, four. All right, twenty three look about like it. Anyone still trying to get in? Five. All right, that's 25. So we'll go ahead and get started. How this works, if you've ever done a Kahoot uh, game before, it's going to ask you a question. Um, and uh, you'll have four colors will show up on whatever device you're using. So you want to pick the answer that corresponds to whatever color is in the network. Um, so, uh, this is just a basic, basic kind of getting a sense of what you know about annotated bibliography, um, what your perspectives on them are. There's no right or wrong answer. There are some answers that are more right than others, but that's okay. All right. <laughs> that is my face. <laughs> All right, so I have created an annotated bibliography before. Your choices are red, yes, and it was super helpful. Uh, blue, yes, worst experience of my life. <laughs> Yellow, no, I haven't done one of those before. Or green, what kind of biography? Oh, man, I didn't know. <laughs> All right, don't get a lot of time for those. All right, looks like kind of a wide range of experience. Most of you have never heard of one before. Okay. Do you have uh, an annotated bibliography assignment in your nursing classes coming up? You know, you're going to be doing one of those. Okay. All right. If at any point you, if at any point you do, or if at any point you have to write a paper, right? Sometimes an annotated bibliography can help you in particular, not just uh, for your instructors. So um, a lot of people definitely don't like annotated bibliographies. Like I said, they get kind of a bad rep. 
Okay, so we're going to move on. The seven of you who have picked yellow uh, might have a little difficulty with these following questions, but give it your best shot. All right, so the purpose of an annotated bibliography is to what? Red, prove you've done your research. Blue, create a record of the research you've done. Yellow, make you cry alone in the corner. Or green, promote deeper engagement. Oh. All right. Most of you said create a record of the research you've done. Okay? Definitely not a wrong, wrong answer at all. I would say any of those colors, um, except for maybe yellow, maybe probably a little more, which got a surprising amount of, of votes, um, any of those others um, are valid reasons for doing an a annotated bibliography. Part of what I want to focus on today is the promoting deeper engagement with your research. That's going to be an important one, especially for those of you who aren't required to do one in class. All right, third one. The most important thing about an annotated bibliography is what? Red, the number of sources. More is better. Blue, the quality of sources. Better is better. Yellow, correct formatting. Formatting, conformity is better. Or green, the depth and detail of annotation. Okay, most of you think the quality of sources, the types of sources you find, fantastic answer. I'd say there's definitely some uh, reasons to go for green, okay, some reasons to go for red if you are writing in particular for a class, okay. The correct formatting. Definitely important, maybe not the prime most important thing. Okay, last one. We'll move on. The purpose of an annotation is to summarize the source, to analyze the source, to critique the source, or to provide opinions on the source. It's probably the highest vote. Uh, analyzing probably second highest. That's good. That's primarily what you're going to be wanting to do with these annotated bibliographies. So it sounds like even though a lot of you, seven of you have said you hadn't really heard of one before, um, it sounds like a lot of you kind of get the point of them, which is good. Um, that's what we're going to be spending a lot of time on today. All right, so thank you for, for participating in that. I uh, always like those good quizzes that are kind of fun to play around with. All right. So like I said, annotated bibliography, and this is informal, okay? So if at any point, if at any point you want clarification, if it found, seems like we're going too fast, um, if you have questions, anything like that, stop me, um, because this can definitely be more of a conversation than a presentation. Uh, it needs to be. Uh, so what is an annotated bibliography for the seven of you who haven't heard of one before, okay? A bibliography is a list of sources uh, with public information, uh, or publication information in a particular format. How many of you have written papers that have a bibliography or a works cited paper? That's pretty common, okay? Uh, how many MLA, usually? Anyone APA? APA may, it tends to be more, APA is a, a style um, that tends to be used more in um, psychology and sciences, probably in, in nursing, if you were ever to write a paper for a nursing class. Um, MLA tends to be more humanities, so your English classes would probably have had you use MLA. Okay? We're not going to dwell too much on the formatting side of things today. You've had that in the past. Okay? Now for the annotated part. The annotation is what really sets them apart from regular bibliography. So an annotation in general, when you annotate something, like you annotate an article or your notes, you're usually writing notes off, in, off to the side in the margins, or you're underlining things, or you're highlighting things. Annotations are basically your notes. Annotated bibliographies are similar, right? These are your notes about the source, okay? But it's a little bit more formal. So an annotation in this case is additional information about the source, usually providing summary analysis or reflection. Okay? 
the purpose of annotation, why you would annotate something, varies. And a lot of your instructors may ask for annotated bibliography as a lead up to a research paper. <laughs> All right. So we've got a couple of examples of annotated bibliography so that you can see them, and we'll look at them up on the screen later on. Um, if on whatever device you have, you want to pull up um, this link and this link, if you have a QR code reader, you can download them. Like I said, we'll look back at them uh, in a little bit, so if you aren't able to pull them up, that's fine. Okay? I've got an example in MLA format and an example in APA format. Okay, and that's just so you can see them up nice and close. And you'll notice on these, I'll pull up uh, a couple right now. I'll just, I'll just pull up the APA one. I'll bring this back up at the end, so if you need to write them down, that's fine. Why do real people annotate in bibliographies? Why do real people actually 
people go out and they publish annotated bibliographies. If you get into grad school uh, for a master's thesis or a doctoral dissertation, um, there are sources out there where you can go out and find an entire published annotated bibliographies that are meant completely to, to help you in your research. Okay? So that's one reason people write annotated bibliographies, to compile a list of sources that may be useful to others who are researching the same topic. Okay? Possibly you're doing it for, for those you know, personal reasons to keep track of the various sources you've encountered and their value. There's probably no better way to prepare for writing a research paper of any sort or of any length than to actually reflect on the sources that you've been reading and talk about how they might be valuable and where you might use those sources. Okay? And possibly, and I've done this, um, and depending on what class you're in or who your instructor is, there may be some, some issues with this. But you can even pre-write your materials. You can copy and paste from your annotated bibliography right into your research paper. And that's how I've written a lot of my research papers. right? Because if you're summarizing a source or you're analyzing a source in your annotated bibliography, when you go to introduce that source in your research paper, you've already got good summary and analysis in your annotated bibliography. You can copy it over. Okay? All right. So what makes for good annotations and a good annotated bibliography? Um, we already mentioned, and this is a minor point um, for this particular presentation, um, but uh, formatting and using a style guide. So a little brown handbook or Purdue OWL online or any of those resources that help you actually form the citations. You want to make sure that you've got good formatting. But the rest of it beyond that is all about what you put in your annotations and how you structure So some good tips is to annotate your research. And that, when I say annotate your research, I mean as you're, as you're going through articles, you're writing in the margins, you're highlighting things that you can then put into your annotated bibliography later. So you don't have to reread that entire the entirety of your research. Okay. I'd also recommend creating that bibliography as you go. Every time you read um, a research article or you read a book, create the entry. Okay, so you don't have to do it all at once, and you can actually think about that source and its usefulness. Okay. A couple things to think about: what information about this source will help me later on? What stands out? What relates best to my research? Or what information about this source will help others? The annotation itself can be, like I said, any, any variety of forms. Usually a good annotation is going to have a decent amount of summary. It's going to be saying, this is what this source is about. This is the author. This is the main point. These are some details that really stand out. Okay. Again, you may also end up, uh, besides summarizing and outlining main arguments, you might end up with background information about the author, relevancy to your topic, or a little bit of an analysis of the points made. Okay. All right. Any questions of any of that? I know that was rapid fire, but I want to get to something a little bit more interactive. Okay. So I want to take a look at a couple of annotations. And uh, you'll see them on the screen. You'll have a chance, if you want to jot some notes down about them, um, you can talk about whether or not these are good annotations or bad annotations. Um, but my goal with this is we're going to go through three different annotated bibliography entries. And we can start to suss out, OK, what makes a valuable annotated bibliography entry? What makes a valuable annotation? Um, and what makes a not so useful one? Okay, so consider the following. All right, so you have the annotation, uh, or the bibliographical entry up here. Annotation says, the author of this recent book, uh, the author of this recent book has written other books on body modification and is a lecturer at Macquarie University. Two chapters of this, this scholarly book will provide proof the most useful. The subject uh, in and of tattooing and bodily inscription both of which discuss the history and current social aspects of tattooing and body art. The discussion is often dense, including much discussion of Foucault. 
The book includes a bibliography, and the author is a professor at Macquarie University in Australia. What are your thoughts on this? Is this a good annotation or a bad annotation? Where, where could it maybe be improved? Anything? Yeah? The problem is the size of the annotation professor at Macquarie University body, so that's really A little bit redundant. So especially if you were turning this into an instructor, if this were an assignment, um, with repetition, this isn't necessarily going to get you any better points. Right. Anything? Yeah? Instead of saying two chapters of this algorithm, point out the chapters. Okay. I think they do that in the next sentence. I think these are the chapter, um, chapter titles, okay? both of which discuss history and current. So it does some summary of what those chapters are. And that, that can be useful, right? And that's a good point. You do want to mention exactly what those chapters are, because if you're writing your paper later on, you're going to have a bit of an issue finding out which those chapters are. Because sometimes you, you read the source and you go maybe a month or two without going back to it. You want to remember exactly what, what to find or what you want to find. Anything else? I don't think that you need to put in there that the book includes a bibliography. Okay. The book includes a bibliography in the author. Yeah, so they may, what they may be trying to do is prove the credibility of the source, saying, okay, they, they looked into other sources. I'd say if it's not, if that's not important to your research, if you aren't going to be using that bibliography, you don't need to put it in the annotation. But that's kind of up to the author. Is this overall good, overall bad? It's not bad, right? It's got a good summary of the, the book. If you, if you had forgotten what this source was about and you went back to your annotated bibliography, this would help you to write your paper, right? Here's the next one. Here's sort of a, sort of a, a bibliographical entry, and here's the annotation. A woman who secretly wanted a tattoo and finally got one. It's easy to understand. <laughs> Yeah, I'd, I'd say laughing is a very kind way to put it. Severely laughing. Right? It's got bare bones summary. What's going to be useful about this source? You don't know because they don't mention it. Okay? If you were to write a paper um, and try to integrate this source, you'd have to reread the entire source to get an idea of what it's about and what kind of useful it is. I think that's pretty obvious. Okay. Last one, and then we'll kind of open up for general questions and discussion. All right, so sample annotation number three, you've got the entry, and then you've got this article presents the new standards for outsourcing developed by the AICPA Ethics Committee. The standards are summarized, and a brief discussion is included of the implications going forward for business and international trade. The authors indicate that changes to the business community will be relatively minor. This is a helpful source for getting an overview of the current ethics standards in outsourcing. Thoughts? Yeah. Um, I think the main thing is that the authors are pretty clear about what the source is about. It's not bad. Okay. You know exactly what the source is about. Okay. It's pretty well written. Nothing extraneous, there's not a lot of, that's one other thing that you want to make sure not to do is put in wild opinions, okay? You want to keep it pretty factual, okay? And they've done that. Anything that you would change, let's say you weren't turning this in for assignment, let's say you're basically annotating a bibliography for your own purposes, for your own use. <laughs> is there anything personally that you would add that would help you out? I would dumb it down a little bit. That's not a big word. Okay. okay. So you may make it more more easy reading for yourself. Right? Okay. And that's perfectly valid. Anything else? Personally, I would have called attention to um, a couple of specific passages in the book, something like that. Yeah. Like when they say this point out a couple of specific standards. It doesn't have to be anything you know, over the top. You're not writing a book or a court, right? But you do want to call attention to some, some information that may be useful to you later on. 
And again, it's completely different if you're turning it in for an instructor than it is if you're doing it for your own purposes. Turning it in for an instructor, you follow their rules and their guidelines. And every instructor is going to have different rules and guidelines. Uh, an instructor for a philosophy class may want something completely different out of an annotated bibliography than, say, a nursing or a biology instructor. Okay? So for the most part, you're following their rules. But every annotation is going to have some of the same features. You're going to have that that well-formed bibliographical entry for that citation, as well as a good summary of the source and pointing out a couple of key features of that source. Make sense? Any questions or other comments about any of the stuff that we've gone over? OK, I'm going to go back a little bit so that uh, those of you who want can jot down these uh, those of you who want can jot down um, those URLs. And when I pull them up on my phone, they download as PDFs. You may have more, uh, more luck uh, downloading on a computer or something like that. But you can jot down the URL, or you can uh, take a picture of the QR code. Um, and that's just for your future reference. Okay, so you can see what they look like. Any questions or comments? I know that goes fast. <coughs> well, like I said, that's about all I got for you today. Um, I do encourage you, those of you who are writing annotated bibliographies, either you're preparing for a research <coughs> paper, um, or, hey, maybe you're looking into some nursing sources and you want to make sure that you go back to them when you're studying the influx and you want to have some annotations there that you can look at um, to kind of guide you to sources where maybe you can get a bit more help. If you want to put one together, I'd encourage you to come down and see us at the tutoring center. Um, talk to one of the English tutors. Send us an email, something like that. Uh, we can help you out with things like that. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Jane, did you have anything you wanted to close with? Uh -huh. If you have any questions about finding sources or citing them, you can also come to the library for help with those types of questions as well. So thank you all for coming. If you need your evaluations and your iPads back here with me, that would be great. And I hope you have a great day. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>